This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, hope everyone's having an inspirational, enjoyable time today. Uh, just to speak out a few things that we didn't have the opportunity to speak out when we were by the Kever due to the heat. I um, want to say over some Torah from the Haflar of Pinchas Horowitz. You know, there's a very big discussion in the Gemara Rosh Hashanah. It says, Vayavor Hashem al Vayikra. It says the Gemara Rosh Hashanah, Melamech and Nesatif Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Kishleach Tzibur, Vaomer Lefneim and Tase Lefana Kaseder Azeh, Loi Yashuv Reikam. That the Rebbeinu Shem promises us that if we invoke the Yud Gimel Midos Harachamim, they will not be returned empty-handed. And the question that's raised is, how often do we invoke the Yud Gimel Midos Harachamim, and yet can we always say that our tefillahs are answered? So the Hafla suggests in Parshas Kisisa that maybe what the Gemara means is Yasu Lefanai Kaseidar Zeh Not just to say the Yud Gimel Midos You have to act that way You have to be a Rachum Not just to say the Yud Gimel a Rachum Yasu Lefanai The person has to make themselves into a Rachum A Chanon Slow to get angry So that, that's what the Gemara means Yasu Lefanai Kaseidar Hazeh Says the Hafla I heard that there is an indication that this is not the perush. That in fact, if all you do is merely recite Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim, that's sufficient that your tefillah will not be returned empty-handed. And the raya is like this, because we say, Kael HaReis HaLano Loi Marish Loi Why do we say Kael HaReis HaLano Loi Marish Loi Shesrei? Why not Rachum? Why not Chanun Hoyrei Salanu Loi Marish Loi Shesrei? After all, the Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim, why do we specifically say Kael HaReis because of all the Yud Gimel Midas Rachamim, there's one that we can't do ourselves, and that's we can't do Kale. That's the Rebbeinu Shlaim. So the the Python writes Kale Harisa to indicate that not like this chat. You don't have to do the Yud Gimel Midas Rachamim. It's enough. It's sufficient merely to say it. But then that flush says maybe it's not a raya. Maybe we could do Kale because the Gemara says in Masech the Megillah on Daf Yud Gimel. Minayin Shakadosh Baruch Hu Kara Liyakov Kale. That Yaakov was called Kale. From here we see that a Basar Vadam could practice the Mida of Rachamim of Kale. We could practice that powerful Mida Sarachamim. So in fact, the Hafla says maybe it is Shayach for a, for a Jew to practice even the Mida of Kale. Another interesting thing that the Hafla writes in the Sefer Hamakna and the Hakdama. Is Chazal tell us in Chagiga Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Daf Tezvav, Torah Yevakshu Mipiu Kimalach Hashem Tzvakos Hu Im Doime Harav Lamalach Hashem Tzvakos Yevakish Torah Mipiu. That if the Rebbe is like a Malach Hashem, you should seek out Torah from him, and if he's not like a Malach Hashem, so you don't seek out Torah from him. So what does that mean? That if the Rebbe is like a Malach Hashem? So I once heard from a, a big philanthropist, Reb Moshe David Cooperman. They said, what does it mean that if the Rebbe is like a Malach, you should seek out Torah from him? What do we know about a Malach? One thing we know about, about, about a Malach is, V'raglehem regel yeshara, their leg is straight. I, we don't, it doesn't really matter if the Rebbe is a big Lamdin, if the Rebbe is a big... If the Rebbe is a Yashar, then seek out Torah from him. If he's, straight, if, a, if he's a straight shooter, if he's a Yashar. What else do we know about a Malach? Upneyem kipnei adam. If the Rebbe is down to earth like a human being, also that's an important quality. What else do we know about a Malach? It says, Bishtayim yichasa panov, or Bishtayim yichasa raglov, or Bishtayim yoyfeif. The Rebbe covers his, the Malach covers his face with two of his wings, covers his legs with two of his wings, and he flies with two. Meaning, if the Rebbe doesn't use all of his ammunition, if he covers himself over and he's only showing you a little bit of what he has, that's also a symbol you should seek out Torah from the Rebbe. But the Hafla explains very beautifully. A Malach we know is an Oymed. A Rebbe, when he teaches his Talmidim, he cannot be a Hoylech. He cannot be interested in his own growth. He has to be focused on the growth of the Talmidim. If the Rebbe is like a Malach and that he's an Oymed, then we know to seek out Torah from him. I want to tell you one of the most incredible chidushim of the Hafla. There's a Gemara in Chulin 
On Daf Ches. The Gemara wants to know if you have a blazing hot knife and you shech the behemoth with a blazing hot knife, is it a kash or a shechita? Do we say first the behema is burnt and then it's a shechita and then it comes out it's not a good shechita? Or do we say first comes a shechita and then it gets burnt so it is a good shechita? Amar Abzeira Chiduda Kaidem Lelibuna First is the shechita and then is the burning. Said the hafla and the Chassam Soifer quotes this in his Chedush HaMasech Tachulen that the hafla said this at his Purim Suda. Because the Gemara says, Amar Rab first comes the Shechita and then the burning. Frek the Hafla, how did Rab know first comes the Shechita and then the burning? You know how? Because it must be that at that Purim Suda, when Rabbah shechted Rab he must have used a blazing hot knife. And Rab felt that first he was shechted and then he was burnt. So therefore, Rab Paskin, first comes the Shechita and then comes the burning. Says the Chsam Soifer, even though the Hafla said this as a joke, and as Simchas Purim, but if it emanated from the mouth of this holy man, then we could take it to the bank, Lahalacha, that that's Psha and the Gemara, that first comes the Shechita, and then comes the Liban. Marav Rabbi before the Torah was given, how did Avram Avinu keep the Torah? How did he keep Shabbos? He kept Shabbos, but the Torah says, Yoim Valaylo Lo Yishboisu, you're now at a rest, day and night. So how did Avram simultaneously keep the Shabbos and desecrate the Shabbos? Because on the one hand, he, he kept all the mitzvahs. On the other hand, the Torah says in Parshas Noyach, Ben Noyach is now to keep the Shabbos. So the Hafla advances, advances an incredible chidosh. That before the Torah was given, the day preceded the night. Yoim v'alaylo lo Day followed by night, you're now to rest. But night followed by day, you are allowed to rest. So Avram Avinu kept Friday night, Shabbos day, but he desecrated Friday day, Friday night, or Shabbos day, Shabbos night. So basically Avram, Avram Avinu kept Friday night and uh, Shabbos day, but he didn't keep Friday day. And Shabbos before the Torah was given was day followed by the night. This is a very major chiddush of the Hafla in the Hamaknan Kedushan Lions at Lamed Zayin Amad Beis. I'm sure this is a Chiddush we've heard before, that before the Torah was given, the day preceded the night. What's very interesting is that the Aruch Laner argues. The Aruch Laner and the Binyan Siyon, in Simen Kuv Chavav, the, Binyan, the Aruch Laner writes, this Chiddush of the Hafla, that for Goyim, before the Torah was given, the night follows the day, it is not correct. Because how do I know first comes night and then comes day? Vay Erev, Vay Voiker, that was written before the Torah was given. Elamai, you're going to say, because the Pasuk says, Yoim Valayla, Lo Yish Boisu. No, that can't be. The Torah always says the day before the night. In Kol Torah Kula, it always says the day before the night with four exceptions. The only four exceptions are, Ufachadeta Layla V'yoimam. In Devarim, or in Malachim, Lio Yisei Necha, Pesucha Yisel HaBai Yisazel, Laila V'yoyim, or Teiradna Inai Dima, Laila V'yoyim, or Shloishas Yomim, Laila V'yoyim. But otherwise, it always says the day before the night. And the reason is, because that's the Lashon Akra. There are specific instances where the Torah writes the night before the day, and there are, uh, are particular reasons for that. So these are some of the Chidushim of Rabbi Pinchas Horowitz, Rabbi Pinchas Alevi Horowitz, the Chief Rabbi of Frankfurt, Zechusa Yogin Aleinu. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.